And then when he lambasted them for the river, he cursed them. We love him for that. Oh, yes, we do. He turned over their tables, and we love him for that. Oh, yes, we do. And he chased them out of the temple, and we love him for that. Oh, yes, we do. We can't wait for him to come back. You know, Merchant of Venice? You know about a man named Shylock? The book written by the best sheikh that Britain has ever produced? A sheikh called Shakespeare? <laughs> well, they can't ban Shakespeare. They can't say of Merchant of Venice that it's anti-Semitic. No, you can't do that. Now Shakespeare is too great. So it's still there. Merchant of Venice is still there. It's not been banned in any university. Shylock is the money lender. And Shakespeare takes him to task. In the Hadith of the Prophet, it is sucking blood. In Shylock, in Merchant of Venice, it's a pound of flesh. Hmm? And so today you have Shylock is today dressed in a black suit, usually in Zurich. <laughs> All right, with a tie, and he's very respectably known as the banker. No, 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 you're not a banker, you're a money lender. And if you want to know what Jesus, the son of Mary, thinks about you, take a look and see what he did when he went into the temple. And then when he lambasted them for their river, he went into the temple, the masjid. And he found them engaged in riba, not the lending and borrowing of interest, on interest. He found them engaged in the same riba, but it was not money lending. It was something else. It was ripping off people. That is also riba. And he cursed them. That's Jesus. But you don't hear about this Christmas time, you know. You only hear about the lamb. He cursed them. We love him for that. Oh, yes, we do. He turned over their tables, and we love him for that. Oh, yes, we do. And he chased them out of the temple, and we love him for that. Oh, yes, we do. We can't wait for him to come back. And he declared that you've taken the house of Allah and transformed it into a den of thieves, and then decided he must die. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had prohibited riba in the Torah. They changed the Torah. They rewrote it. The Torah now says, you can find it, go look in it, you'll find it, it's still there. It is haram for a Jew to lend money on interest to another Jew. Rabbi, can you tell me why? Answer, don't rip off your own brother. That's why. It is haram for a Jew to lend money on interest to another Jew. But it is halal, he can lend money on interest to those who are not Jews. It's called double standards. And then they forced the hand of the Roman government to execute him. But how? By hanging, crucifixion. Why did they want him to die like that? because it's still there in the Torah. It is still there up to now. They've not taken it out. They're not going to take it out. Whoever dies by hanging is the cursed of Allah. So if we can get him to die like that, it will now become absolutely plain and clear beyond the shadow of a doubt. He could not have been the Messiah. And then when they saw him die, they were so overjoyed, they could dance with joy. Waka him, Allah says. They're boasting now. Inna qatalna al-masiha Isa ibn Maryam Rasul Allah. This is called sarcasm. We've killed him. The Messiah, meaning sarcasm. 
the son of Mary, the messenger of Allah. They didn't believe all of that. They thought he was an imposter. When they saw him die on the cross before their very eyes, it was now absolutely plain and clear beyond a shadow of a doubt he could not have been the Messiah. Why? He has the curse of the Lord upon him. Why? He's dead, but he never ruled the world from Jerusalem with a rule which is eternal. Huh? So they're now convinced beyond any shadow of a doubt he could not have been the promised Messiah. So they're waiting for the Messiah to come. What they didn't know and what no one knew Absolutely no one knew, not even the Pope, <laughs> until Allah revealed the Quran, no one knew it. Was No, they did not kill him. That was their first objective, to kill him. So Allah says, you did not achieve objective number one. وَمَا Objective number two was to cause him to die on the cross, not on the ordinary death. So Allah says, no, you did not achieve objective number two as well, because he was not crucified. Well, I can shubbihalahum, Allah made it appear unto you that that was what happened. But rafahullahu ilayhi, Allah raised him unto himself. How did Allah make it appear that he was crucified? Now kindly listen carefully. Now this verse has been interpreted by classical commentators on the Quran as meaning that someone else was transformed, made to look like Jesus, and that someone else was crucified instead of Jesus. So that whereas everything appeared as though Jesus was being crucified, in fact, it were not so. Now, I said classical his, uh, interpreters of the Quran, and that may give the impression that these are the original and earliest interpreters, but they were not. In fact, uh, Neil Robinson, a, a very able scholar from Leeds University in the United Kingdom, in his book, Christ and Islam and uh, Christianity, has traced the origins of these interpretations and found them to be originating from Iraq in the uh, middle of the second century. Uh, some classical commentators, on the other hand, struggle with the variety of uh, interpretive detail that was given by various commentators. And the best summation of that I have found to be in the Tafsir al-Qadir, the big Tafsir, the big commentary, by uh, the pride of the faith of Razi. Now, Razi, after summarizing all of the various interpretations that have been offered by Muslim scholars on this, in the end he concludes by saying these uh, interpretations are contradictory one to another, and uh, in the end only God knows what happens. Now, if we were to retrace our steps and find out where all these varied interpretations came from, where did Muslim scholars get the idea that someone else was made to look like Jesus and crucified instead, this came from a variety of sources, including informers, from people of other faiths in the area. There were uh, some early Christian groups, not the earliest, mind you, from the second century of Christianity forward. There were Gnostics who believed that someone else was made to look like Jesus. In the Mel Gibson movie, we saw uh, Simon of Cyrene carrying the cross along with Jesus. And uh, some had believed that Simon was uh, in fact transformed to look like Jesus and was crucified instead of Jesus. And so this kind of information fed into the Muslim commentaries. But now when these commentaries are examined carefully, uh, most uh, modern scholars would tend to, today in Islam to think that something else is, re is the reality behind the Quranic narrative. Yusuf Ali, for example, in his translation of the Quran, has it such that uh, even though it appeared to the onlookers that Jesus had died on the cross, in fact, he had not died. Uh, further to that, we have uh, Muhammad Asad in the message of the Quran, again, a translation and commentary on the Quran, well rooted in the traditional tafsirs, uh, saying also that the stories which grew up within Muslim tradition to say that someone else was put on the cross instead of Jesus, it's not uh, necessarily what the Quran implies. And in fact, he found and he exposed a very a difficult problem with that interpretation. What he said was 
that the passage, these stories that grew up among Muslim commentators ignored a grammatical problem that was there in, in the way they have interpreted the verse. And this grammatical problem was pointed out by a, an ancient classical uh, scholar uh, of Quranic tafsir, a scholar by the name of Az-Zamakshari in his uh, tafsir known as Al-Kashaf, the unveiling. And what Zamakshari said was that in fact, when you look at the passage, it says he was made to appear to them. But it could also mean it was made to appear to them. Because in the Arabic reference, the reference who, uh, using a personal pronoun there, could refer to him or to it. And he said that if in fact this verse is referring to the crucified person, that the crucified person was made to look like Jesus, that crucified person should have previously been mentioned so that the referent could be attached to him. See, so if you're telling the story and you said, he said, we want to know who is this he? But if this person was just mentioned a little while ago, we know this is referring to that person. If the person was not mentioned, you have to introduce him by name. And so Zamakshari pointed out that this could not be a reference to the crucified individual. But the classical commentators were basing their commentary on the idea that this referred to Jesus. But Zamakshari pointed out that in fact it couldn't refer to Jesus because it was not Jesus who was made to resemble someone else, according to their explanation. It was someone else who was made to refer to Jesus. And Zamakshari proposed instead, even though he himself did not reach the logical conclusion of his proposal, he proposed that the verse actually means it was made so to appear to them as in the Arabic expression it seemed so to them. So now many modern commentators would follow that interpretation and say that what the verse is saying is that even though it appeared to them that they had crucified Jesus, in fact they had not done so. In the final summation, this verse of the Quran does not necessitate the belief that someone else was put on the cross instead of Jesus. But it leaves open the possibility that Jesus did not actually die on the cross. And this, in a nutshell, is the Muslim belief. That even though the enemies thought they had Jesus, thought they had him killed, they were not successful in doing that. Abdul Majid Daribadi in his Tafsir al-Quran explains the word crucifixion as meaning to kill a person by means of crucifixion. It's not just the crucifixion itself, but it's an, a method of execution. So as a method of ex execution, it failed on that occasion. To me, this is what the Quran is saying. They killed him not, and in case they were thinking, but wait a minute, we crucified him. The Quran is saying, well, you didn't even do that, did you? Because if you look back at the records, you will see that there was some doubt. The Jews had requested for the knees to be broken and the bodies to be taken down, but then the knees were not broken. This explains why in Matthew's Gospel, it says that the Jews uh, who wanted him dead, it came back the next day, which was the day of the Sabbath. <laughs> because the crucifixion occurred on the Friday, they said, and then the Sabbath is the Saturday. Jews came back and they went to Pilate and they said, well, wait a minute, seal up the tomb. Uh, lest the, the, the disciples will come steal his body away and then they will proclaim that he resurrected from the dead. And then the second deception would be greater than the first. What did they think was the first deception? You see, they left the scene on Friday thinking that Jesus would be dead. Right. They had requested that the legs of the uh, crucified victims be broken. But only the other two victims had their legs broken and Jesus' legs were spared. So what, what was the purpose of breaking the legs? One theory is that by breaking the legs, you hasten death. Right, right. So the Jews left the scene thinking that his legs would be broken, he'll be done for. They heard later on that his legs weren't broken and now they're saying, well, wait a minute, seal up the tomb because he, the next thing you know, he'll come out of the tomb alive and then they will say that he resurrected from the dead. Right. So uh, they themselves had some doubt. This is why the Quran says, Those who differ about him uh, are, are in doubt concerning the matter. They have no knowledge concerning the, the matter, except that they follow some uh, conjecture. They, they right, just right. supposed that he was dead, but he wasn't actually dead. So it seems to me that this is what the Quran is saying. They thought they had him dead, mm -hmm. but they didn't kill him for certain. That's why the verse ends by saying, but they didn't kill him for certain. How did Allah make it appear that he was crucified? Now kindly listen carefully. Allah says, وَلَكِنْ شُبِّهَ لَهُمْ Allah made it appear like that. 
to cause an innocent man to assume the appearance of the Messiah and then to be crucified. That is nonsense, it is rubbish and it is an act of injustice and those who hold this view will have to answer to Allah for it one day. Well then what happened? What happened? Does the Quran not say that it was sent to explain all things? Hmm? How did Allah make it appear that Nabi Isa alayhi salam was crucified when he was not? The answer is there in the Quran. In Surah Ali Imran, the third surah of the Quran, and again in Surah Al Ma'idah, the fifth surah of the Quran, Allah uses the word wafat. Wafat in this context, in this context, means taking the soul. Only an angel can take your soul. Won't you agree with me? Only an angel. <laughs> and Allah instructs the angel to take your soul. So, in this context, the implication is that Allah took the soul of Nabi Isa a.s. Is it possible <coughs> that he took the soul and returned it? Is that possible? In Surah Al-Zumar of the Quran, <coughs> Allah says, بَعَلَ أُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ Allah takes the souls at the time of maut. Maut is death. Allah takes the souls at the time of death. وَالَّتِي لَمْ تَمُتْ فِي مَنَامِهَا And those whose souls are not taken while they are awake, Allah takes the souls while you are asleep. فَيُمْسِكُ الَّتِي قَدَى عَلَيْهَا الْمَوْتِ he then keeps those souls for whom mouth is written. Death is ordained. وَيُرْسِلُ الْأُخْرَى إِلَىٰ أَجَلٍ مُسَمَّةٍ And for those for whom mouth is not yet written, Allah returns the souls. We know from this verse one form, one form, namely sleep, in which Allah does this. He takes your soul and He returns it. This may not be the only one but this is one that while you're asleep he takes your souls and if mouth is not written for you if death is not yet ordained for you he then returns the soul for a specific period of time in which case you did not die no that's why you're here sitting in this auditorium today if Allah had kept the soul you will not be here, you will be underneath the earth. So now it is clear, if Allah took the soul, this is the context in which the word wafat is used in both Surah to Ali Imran and Surah to Ma'idah. This is the context that Allah took the soul. If He took the soul and He did not return it, then Nabi Isa Islam died. He was crucified. But Allah says, no, they did not succeed in crucifying him. They did not crucify him. They did not kill him. And so there's only one possible explanation left. And that is that after Allah took the soul, and they were now convinced that he was dead, and they took down the body. Some Muslims don't want to hear that. No, because they have this fairy tale interpretation of the Quran. That no, 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 Jesus, Nabi Isa Islam was never put on the cross. I don't know where they got it from. Maybe the theory of substitution or somewhere else. Or maybe in Disneyland. They took the body down because they were convinced he was dead. They prepared the body for burial, which is Janazah. And then they put the body in a cave. They sealed the cave. There's a Roman guard outside. Then Allah returned the soul. 
the soul has been returned to the body. So when the soul is returned to the body, you'll wake up, you'll stand up one day. I mean, why is this subject so difficult for some people to understand? So he's now alive. He never died. But if they know he's alive, they're going to come after him again. So then Allah raised him, body and soul, everything. Allah raised him the way he raised Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam in the Isra and Miraj, the nocturnal journey. Raising in the sense of taking him from this material universe into other worlds of space and time. I have no other English word to use than the word raise. And I'm allowed to use the word raise because in the Quran Allah uses the same word Bal Rafa'ahullahu ilayhi Allah raised it unto himself. Meaning that Nabi Isa <coughs> alayhi salam, the Prophet Jesus, is no longer in our world of space and time, no longer in our material universe. He has now been transported into another world of space and time, or what the Quran refers to as the Samawat. There are seven of them. And in physics, they're called parallel universes. Every physicist knows about it. Ask Einstein, he'll tell you. Hmm? <coughs> Since he never experienced death, no, never experienced mouth, no. And since Allah says in the Quran, Kulu nafsin da ikatul maut, every soul must taste death. It follows that Nabi Isa Islam must return. But they did not know that. They thought he was dead. And they know that when Allah gives his word, he keeps his word. So they're still waiting for the Messiah. Who when he comes, will rule the world. From the Holy Land, from Jerusalem. With a rule which will be eternal, meaning the end of history. I lived in New York for 10 years. <laughs> and during that time I interacted with the rabbis and with the Jews. <laughs> and I can confirm to you, oh yes, they are waiting on the Messiah. And they believe the Messiah is around the corner. One day he's coming back. And the son of Mary will now rule the world. From Jerusalem with a rule which will be eternal and the religion of Abraham the true religion of Abraham would rule the world from the Holy Land what Prophet Muhammad brought Allah's blessings be upon him is the religion of Abraham and so that will be the end of history. Tell that to Francis Fukuyama for me. Tell that to Francis Fukuyama and Samuel Huntington for me. This is the truth, not what they have.